Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Carty. Today's episode, we talk to Suzanne Bernier about a fantastic project she's involved with that is continuing to give people hope after a disaster. She's going to be speaking to me about the Stars of Hope and all of the great work they're doing internationally in helping people deal with the aftermath of a disaster, but also empowering them to help others in the future. So stay tuned. Hey, Suzanne, great to see you. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Thanks very much for having me. So before we get started, can you just tell uh, the viewers a little bit about yourself, your background? Sure. I have been in the field of emergency management for over 20 years now. But before that, uh, I was a journalist. And I was a news reporter and an anchor in Northern Ontario and thought that was going to be my life. And I enjoyed it very much. Ended up in in a very indirect way getting into the provincial government and working in communications there. And from there, I was given an opportunity to work for a public safety division in their public safety area, which included Ontario Provincial Police, as well as a few other safety uh, divisions, including something back then called Emergency Measures Ontario. It's now called Emergency Management Ontario, but back then that was the name. I went in and I was appointed to be the first media relations spokesperson for the organization. But then a few weeks in when I noticed, wow, there are actual emergency management officers that go in and respond to emergencies and help save lives. I thought, I don't want to just be the one who talks about what they do. I want to be the one that does that. So I went into the director's office and I explained to him exactly what I said. And they finally, they they sent me to the only place in Canada at the time, the Canadian Emergency Preparedness College, where you could get schooled in emergency management. I went, took all the intensive courses there, came out, there happened to be an opening for an emergency management field officer. And I applied, I got it, and I became the first female emergency management field officer in Ontario, and that would have been in 1997. And I've been in the field ever since. Oh, very cool. Well, I know that you and I first uh, met in, I think it was June of 2019, and you were in Calgary for the IAEM conference. And I heard you talk about a program, and that's what I really wanted to talk about today. Uh, you, you talked about the Stars of Hope program. Can you tell us a little bit about how that initiative started? Sure. The Stars of Hope initiative started through an organization called the New York Says Thank You Foundation. And that foundation actually was created um, by one man, who, a New Yorker, who lost his best friend and business partner in the 9-11 attacks. And what he did a couple of years later was he wanted to do something good, um, to do something good with, with what happened and to teach his sons how to, to learn from these types of bad things that might happen. And from him teaching his son that, and this is one of the stories that's in my book, actually, I talk about it, um, he ended up, this father ended up creating um, this huge truck of donations um, to go all the way from New York City all the way to, um, to California when there was a big wildfire going on there. And he did that and he had a big sign on the truck that said, New York, um, New York says thank you. And his goal was to thank everybody else across America as he drove this van of goods to California where they were needed, just to give a message to people to say, thank you, all of you in America, for coming to our need in New York after 9-11. Now we'll come to you and help you. A lot of the groups that ended up going to help other communities after uh, in other 9-11s with the group from, um, from New York says thank you would then notice their communities they were getting into. And one of them they noticed had just been um, horribly um, destroyed by a recent um, hurricane, um, as well as another one by a recent tornado. And when he witnessed the damage and how gray it was on the ground, Jeff thought to himself, we need to add some color in because there are children that are going to have to be re-entering into their homes. And all they're going to see is grayness and darkness. We need to give them some kind of light and hope when they re-enter. So he got a bunch of kids in the area to paint these one-foot wooden stars. And he just said, paint whatever you, you would make you smile. 
on them. If you were going through a bad day and something was going bad, paint something that would make you smile or make you laugh. So the kids started painting these pictures and sayings and just words and hearts and different things and signing their names and little messages on the background. Then they started placing them in different areas in the community. Well, after a couple of weeks of people going around and going back into their homes and noticing this, there was such a big difference in how the community was coming back in, just on their faces and their reactions after going in and re-entering a gray area, which could have been a lot sadder um, if there weren't those spots of color all around them with these messages of support and healing that had come in from all across America. And now since that first uh, idea that Jeff had to plaster those stars all over that community. First of all, those stars, some of them are still there. They're pretty sturdy. And mm -hmm. most of the time, people don't remove them. They're there for a reason, and people like them there. And it reminds them of what happened and who came to help. Um, but it, so now, anybody who's seen some of these stars, because now they're in 67 countries all over the world oh. since that one initiative just 11 years ago. And uh, I brought them to Brussels after the terror attack there. And I have a, a pretty crazy story to tell you about how Brussels received stars from Canada as well as, uh, as America as well. But um, that's, uh, in a nutshell, the story of the Stars of Hope. They're just one-foot wooden stars that get painted by children or adults, anybody who wants to help. And... I just found and have now seen the benefits as an emergency manager, which I was not aware of before, of these types of creative and alternative healing solutions and how it can have such a positive impact, not only on those who are receiving the star, but also on those who are painting the stars. Because now it's grown so big and popular that those who have received the stars are now coming to us asking for the stars because they want to paint them now as survivors. They want to paint them and bring them to the next community that's going to survive that attack or that fire or that tornado. Yeah, that it's a beautiful wonderful. initiative that really brings the victims, the survivors, the healers, everybody together. Well, and it hits so many angles, like when you think of the disaster. So first of all, it's the immediate shock of going back to see something you probably weren't prepared for, even though you probably tried to prepare yourself. Until you see it, I think that's when the reality hits. So, you know, right. that initial um, just hit when you go back and seeing the stars and being able to at least reflect on those. And, and I mean, the mental health piece for so many, right? The trauma. Um, I was actually just in Puerto Rico last week and they were uh, just seeing, you know, the devastation there. And you think, wow, when they get back, you talked about kind of being gray. It's exactly what it was. And so right. had they had these stars, how much, I mean, that, that would have made such a difference. So can you speak, I know when you were talking at IAM, you gave a few examples of actual in the market where you saw the, the power of these stars. Um, you mentioned uh, Brussels here, but you know, wherever. Where, where, yeah. A few examples? Sure. And that's a star behind me for anybody who wants to know what it looks like. That's one there. I think that one... Maybe from San Bernardino, I'm not sure. Since we're speaking of San Bernardino, that's the one I'm going to talk about first because okay. it's the one, the first one that I was involved in where yeah. I actually volunteered um, to bring stars. And for those who might not recall, because unfortunately there's been so many active shooter incidents since, but in December 2015, December 2nd, 2015, you may remember there was a, um, a large active shooter attack that happened. It was workplace violence attack all rolled into one. Um, where it was the County of San Bernardino's um, public health uh, uh, employees who were in a party room that day um, having a Christmas party and a training session. And then midway through the day, one of their um, colleagues, former colleagues, came into the room and, and started firing. And in the end, uh, 14 of their staff were dead and uh, over 20 injured. All with, And then everybody else, of course, mentally affected by witnessing and being in that room with all of their colleagues. Um, so a very tragic, horrible day. While I was watching in the news, I never thought that a couple weeks later um, I'd be there and then a couple months later I'd be meeting all of them and that's this is how it happened. It was all just through someone seeing a star. So what happened was Jeff Parnes from New York says, thank you, called me the day that that attack happened. It happened mid-morning and then uh, he called me and he said, Suzanne, I just want you to know that you know those stars of hope that we deliver 
to, uh, to areas where they've had storms or other bleak things. You know, we've never done it for an active shooter attack, but we think that this community needs hope more than any right now. It's just before Christmas. This has happened. It's devastating. We are going to get a thousand people from New York and New Jersey to paint stars of hope and deliver them there to San Bernardino in a week or two weeks. And we're going to send volunteers there and we're going to plaster that town with stars of hope and messages of love and hope. So as soon as he said that to me, I thought, well, I have to be on this team. So I said, that's it. I'm going, I'm volunteering. So I raised some money. And, and then two weeks later, I met up with the most wonderful volunteers who themselves had all been victims or survivors of other disasters, including the San Diego wildfire, where Jeff had originally helped, um, including New York uh, survivors from 9-11, including a tornado survivor, that first survivor from that community where Stars of Hope was first created uh, for them. Uh, just a beautiful um, gathering of volunteers who were all impacted. But all that even showed me how much strength and resilience these survivors have. As well, look at these survivors themselves have gone through horrific things, have lost their whole towns, their whole homes, yet they're giving back to another community because they heard that they're going through something bad. Uh, so when I got on, on scene, we plastered the area. Now, you might remember the coverage if you saw the scene over the next couple of weeks after the shooting happened. It was at an off-site location. It wasn't where they normally were working. It was at a different building. So this building was all blocked off and you couldn't see anywhere inside it purposely with all this gray fencing. And it looked very sad and depressing, as you can imagine, if you, if you were there and knew what you were passing every day. And it just looked that much worse. It looked like a jail, kind of. So the first thing we did was plastered all of these beautiful, bright stars all over these fences. And you couldn't look at any part of this fence or this gate without seeing these beautiful stars. So we did that. Then we went over to City Hall and we plastered all of the outdoor area and the downtown core of San Bernardino with, with all these stars. We just kind of went all over to do that. And, and then we left silently because it wasn't about media. Te it was just leaving. And then if one person happens to one day see the star, the star and read about it and it helps them heal, job's done. Well, two weeks later, one woman who happened to be an employee in the attack witnessed all of her friends dying, um, was traveling by one of those stars and decided to stop and wanted to look at the stars and started reading the backs of them. And then she found out where the stars had originally come from. So she then called Jeff, the founder, and who then called me to tell me that the whole group of survivors, as well as the family members who'd lost their loved ones, wanted us to come to meet with them in a room so that they could say thank you, but also so that they could paint stars because they'd heard a next community had just gone through an active shooter attack in Texas and they wanted to dedicate their stars and send them over there. So that was the first group that I worked with specifically and now they are a family to me. I'm going back again in January. I go back pretty much every year. We either do star stuff or we just hang out. Um, again, I, I just, I love to see and go back and see how much more resilient they are every year. And I do believe that this, and they say it all the time, that the stars really were the catalyst to help them open up and see, see the rest of the world and not just be stuck in that dark hole that we are in when that type of, type of uh, an event happens. Um, so that's only one uh, huge, huge benefit that I've seen. And I see it every single time I end up going to another community, whether it's in North America, Canada. I've delivered stars to Toronto after the two terror attacks that we've had here over the last year, unfortunately. Um, and then I've also gone to Brussels, Belgium, where, and, and this was another one that I just want to share as well, that the stars, first of all, can be meaningful anywhere. And the stars have no language, really. They do. I mean, you can write in your own language, but stars themselves are visual and they're yeah. appreciated that way. Um, but I went to Brussels because the Brussels, Belgium attack had just happened. I was speaking um, not too far away in Amsterdam. So I called the founder in New York and I said, hey, listen, I'm in Amsterdam. This, this um, bombing just happened. I, I can't get to the airport, but I can take the train because that's still open. Can you, you think you can get me like 500 kids or whoever would want to paint stars yeah. of hope? I'll bring them to Brussels and then I'll, I'll, I'll just deliver them wherever. 
So a few days later, I get this huge delivery of all of these stars from America that have been painted and sent to me to my Amsterdam hotel. I take the train with this big suitcase filled with these wooden stars of hope. I drag them to where I find the center of where all of the memorial is. Yeah. And so I it, like the banking building. And so there's a big memorial there. I have no, now I have a big bag of stars and it's just me. I have no idea how I'm going to get all these stars up there. But this is now the other thing that I saw the beauty of the stars and how little children were affected by it. Mm. So I, I just sit there and then I open up this big bag of stars. And then all you can see is these colorful stars jumping out. All of a sudden, these local children that I saw that were kind of playing in the corner on the street start rushing over. And in French, and I'm, I speak French, so in French, they start asking me, oh, what are, you, what are these? What are, and I say, oh, these are from people who love you from all over the world. And because of the bad thing that happened, they wanted to show you and everyone here that they're thinking about you and that they love you. And so they, they're all happy. And think about these kids. I was just realizing they were in lockdown two days before that for yeah. two weeks. or they, they weren't even able to leave their home. And yet now, just because of seeing these cute little stars that were painted by people halfway across the world, these little kids are smiling and laughing. And then I told them, pick your favorite star, and then you go and get to hang it. And so the kids were making a game of it and picking it, and it just removed themselves from why they were out there and had to be out there. It was a wonderful experience. And the most beautiful part about it was I was talking to some other people, locals that were there that wanted to talk about what was going on, elders, and yeah. who also said that they would take care of our stars for the rest of the time that they were there. And they would watch over them to make sure nothing happened to them. Uh, but when I turned around, uh, I realized that there was this, um, this staircase, this huge staircase, and there was a star lined on each side, sort of like on each side of the staircase, lining up all the way. And it was perfectly done. And I kind of caught through um, a quarter of my eye. It was these kids, these little kids that were doing this. And they were strategically planning and figuring out where they were going to put the stars. And then finally, the little girl comes back up to me. I go, oh, that's so beautiful. And what, what were you, that's how, how did you design that? And she said to me, well, we decided that we wanted the stars to reach up to God. Where, where the people went. And I thought, wow, not only was the whole experience meaningful to them, it broke them out of that mood that they had. Yeah. Uh, it made them forget, but it also, I think, made them realize uh, as well the goodness that can come afterwards. Yeah. And I do hope that from that, those children who, they were, they were everywhere, <laughs> hanging those stars, and they were just loving it. I hope that perhaps one day those kids will, and I hope one day to go back and maybe do some some fun research to find yep. out who the, who those kids were and yep. what they what who are they now, and did yep. those stars make a difference at all, and did those messages on the on the back of them make a difference? So those are a couple that really stand out for me. But there have been dozens, and every one of them has been just as rewarding and beautiful for both sides. It's fantastic because I just think that, you know, the biggest thing is giving people hope and knowing that, I mean, if they lose hope, that's when it gets very, very serious. And so, you know, just something you think it, it, as a concept, sometimes it's it, like it's so simple, but it's so powerful. And that's why it's so powerful. Right. And it's giving back. It's being able to say, I went through a really crappy time, but I'm going to, you know, I've learned from that. I want to help someone else so they don't have to deal with this. And, and just in doing that, how empowering that is for, for the person. So thank you. I mean, that's, it's such a wonderful program. And I'm just, you know, I love hearing about stories like this because with every disaster, I mean, it's tough, right? On people, it's that human factor. And yeah. so, you know, thank you for all you're doing and sharing hope for people. Um, is there anything else? Oh, well, how, how can people get involved if they want sure. to? Is there, right? Well, I have a couple of announcements and surprises okay. that are hot off the press. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So one of them uh, is that, and this has been a dream of Jeff's for years, the founder, yeah. to have a Stars of Hope bus. Cool. That goes to, of course, after the response uh, yeah. is over, uh, but that, that go in in the re recovery phase and offer a space where kids, adults, whoever wants to come in and heal and paint a star for someone else, either within their community or for another disaster or whatever it is, this 
this starts to vote on wheels um, will allow people to do that now. Uh, so they're very, we're very excited about this. And the first commu and it's it's being it's being all done up as we speak right now. It's going to hit its first community, I believe. I believe maybe California, um, yeah. because of the wildfire situation. Yeah. I believe it's going to make its way heading towards there, and that'll be the first place. Don't quote me. That'll be one of them for sure. And you'll see wherever there are larger types of crises or disasters that happen across, well, North America, maybe not Canada for now, yeah. but on the American side, wherever it logistically makes sense, um, those stars that start, watch for the Stars of Hope bus. And what we're hoping as well is maybe getting the message out, and I'm going to be working with our emergency manager communities in Canada and across North America to yeah. be able to let them know that this is something that exists doesn't cost anything for anybody in a community. Uh, might be something that you want to include into your list of, of things to do in the recovery phase, people to call or bring in perhaps. Yeah. Um, just an added, an added resource that we've seen now has such proven uh, benefits emotionally yeah. um, for people to heal that this is just another thing that communities, communities now can have free access to and, uh, and to be called upon to help. And it'll be equipped with everybody that's, you know, us or Jeff or whoever his team are um, on that trip to be in with the stars and the paints and everything. It's wow. going to be a private space for people to paint and heal and yeah. talk. That's great. And you said you have another announcement or another thing you wanted to comment on? Or? Yes. And people might have already caught it. It was just recently on. But Stars of Hope, I think it's going to get even bigger. Um, it was just on The Prophet. I don't oh, know if you know that show. I love that show. Well, it, well, Stars of Hope was featured on the season premiere of The Prophet just two Wonderful. episodes ago. Yeah, I just watched it the other day because I had recorded it. But it, it's a beautiful piece. And um, they they were, The Prophet donated a, a, some, a pretty good amount of money to the foundation because, because they believed in what it did. And, and I, I, I encourage you, anybody who's a Prophet fan, yeah. Watch the the season. Um, what season is this? Six or seven? Anyway, whatever season this is. Yeah. Um, it's the first uh, premiere season uh, show. So yeah. stay tuned and watch it because the lot the last half of the show is about Stars of Hope and how wow. it helped um, a specific person in that show. Oh wow. Well, mm -hmm. is there anything else before we wrap up that you want yes. to mention? Sure. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that if anybody wants to do anything like this, that's quite kind of outside of the box to be able to help after a disaster in your community, or if you hear somewhere, someone somewhere else, and you don't know exactly what to do, and you don't know who to reach out to, I'd encourage you to reach out to Disaster Heroes because now I'm linked up with great places like Stars of Hope, Friends of Firefighters, all these other amazing foundations that allow and empower people to do creative things, to be able to help, even after, long after um, the event has happened, which still helps people heal as well. Yeah. So for those of you who want to know more information or just spread the word, um, I am just sort of ending up being a conduit for being able to direct people to where they need to go. Awesome. And um, it's just a website, I don't, it's not it's free of charge, I just, that's because I, I now realize that I just, I'm in this space where I happen to be the conduit and everybody comes up to me and asks me for these things. So I thought I might as well make it official. Yeah. So I'm making it official that uh, uh, I am now opening up Disaster Heroes uh, to anybody who wants to be empowered and want to be directed to the right place, including Stars oh. of Hope. So you can go to the Disaster Heroes website, disasterheroes.com, and people can, there's a contact form on there and they would be able to contact me directly um, on there as to um, if they want to contact me directly for more information. I'll also be changing it up quite a bit, the website, where I'm going to have some resources that people are going to be able to, to click on. So you'll have, like, if you want to click on Stars of Hope, you can click on that. If you want to click on, you know, there'll be different ones. So stay tuned for that. It's in development because I've just realized how it needs to be now. But yeah. in the meantime, people can still contact me and I'll direct them to whoever they need to speak to for whatever it is that they think they want to do. And for Stars of Hope specifically, you can all go on the Stars of Hope website yourselves if you'd like to. Um, and, and then once you're on the website, 
you can contact people there for more information as well. Or you can contact me and I can put you in touch directly with the executive director um, if you have any ideas or if you want to bring stars into your community or you want to send stars over to another community. You, I, I can put you in touch with or you can just go on the website and get in touch with them directly. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Suzanne. I will put those links in the description in the video below. And uh, thank you so much for all the work you're doing to give people hope after disasters and after crises, because it's such an important uh, thing to look at. And uh, these, these obviously are making a difference. So thank you so much.